All right, greetings. Welcome to this video and to my channel. If you're just stopping by, happy to have you here. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be reviewing this penetrating stain and sealer. If you've got a slab of softwood or hardwood that you want to seal up tight and also give a gorgeous look, hopefully this video can help you out. We're going to be reviewing a product called Water Locks. As always, I will put a link in the description below for this product and all the supplies that you see along with the instructions for the product. So check that out if you are interested. But long story short here, if you're here just for a second, this stuff is pretty awesome. Look at it go on like that. It pours kind of water-like, although it is supposed to be an oil-based penetrating stain and sealant. So here it is, it comes in this small can. It covers about 100 square feet. And in this project that I'm gonna be showing you, uh, I'm gonna do about a total roughly 25 square feet, which kind of took half of a can or so. I put four coats on and I'll get to all that in just a minute. But this is the context of the project. I'm basically taking out a bathroom vanity and I love in a true do-it-yourself fashion, I actually cracked it. Anyway, that's another story. But uh, we're redoing our, our master bathroom here. So I uh, took out the, can the, the countertop and painted up. And this is the slab of wood that we are going to be using as the bathroom countertop. Now, uh, I made a separate video on how you can actually do that if you're interested. Uh, so we're not going to get into that. But long story short, wood, in my opinion, is okay to use for a bathroom countertop as long as you seal it up really well. Now, we're also installing two vessel sinks and then two really cool, uh, in my opinion, really trendy, aesthetically pleasing, modern looking uh, faucets. Now, before you get started, you know, if you buy a can of this stuff, or if you have other stuff laying around the house, uh, definitely get out some scrap wood. In this case, it's the same type of wood that I'm going to be installing on my countertop. So a poplar is the hardwood that, uh, that I'm going to be working with in this video. And so I basically have several strips of poplar and I'm just doing some test uh, samples, getting out different layers and labeling it accordingly, letting it dry. So you're going to want to spend, oh, several days, I think, doing the, the test sample work because basically you don't want to put all this stuff, this effort into it and then realize it's not the color that you want or you should have done another layer or you should have sanded here or sanded there or whatnot. So you kind of want to put a little effort into uh, into this and also testing out different types of wood. I've got cedar, I've got pine, I've got poplar, I've got oak, lots of uh, options here. And so you can see here, I'm also testing uh, will it waterproof and seal to the degree that I want it to since I'm installing this in a, in a bathroom and there will be moisture in the air from the shower, et cetera, et cetera. You don't want that wood uh, absorbing any of that moisture like this, uh, an unsealed piece of cedar will just drink it right up, right? Uh, also, cedar can swell depending on temperature. It can contract and expand really easily. So uh, this is just me kind of testing that out. There's an, uh, water poured directly onto an unsealed piece of poplar. And then I, I think I've got another can of whatever stain that I had down in the basement. And then a can of polyurethane, straight clear polyurethane. And I was ultimately happy with this can of water locks, like I said. So that's kind of the color that I decided to uh, to go with. And don't forget to label everything accordingly. Uh, you can see here it's easy to forget if you uh, you know walk away or this you're testing something out for several days and you go back to it and say, okay, what what did I do here? Especially if you have several test strips going on. All right, so what I'm doing here, I've already made the cutouts for my vessel sink drain and the faucet. I am getting a a saw or a, a sander and just making sure everything is nice and smooth. Um, I'm going to be really careful not to create any, uh, you know, burns in the, in the wood. I want a nice smooth sanding surface. Now I do recommend several plastic cups because you're going to be doing this over several days. One of the downsides to this stuff, it takes 24 hours per coat to cure. So you're going to want to have several cups, you know, do a fresh little pour each time and then you can apply it uh, freshly because it does kind of glob up if it's sitting for 24 hours or more. So change your plastic cup. And I'm using a, a brush. Uh, you can use a piece of lamb's wool. The instructions actually give you some recommendations, but I found like an inch, you know, you could two inch brush uh, would be fine. Uh, this is obviously a, a foam brush. Uh, and I found that to be uh, really convenient, easy to spread around. And I am sealing this piece of wood from top to, to from top to bottom, right? The interior corners, everything. There's not going to be a place for water or moisture to absorb. 
Uh, and I am actually doing the underside of this countertop first, and I don't recommend that. I ex I'll explain that why. Uh, I'll explain why in just a minute. But uh, I made the mistake of doing the underside first, thinking, "Oh, that'll be kind of my test coat, right?" And the the, the top surface will be my final coat. So I want to, you know, learn, practice first and then get better. Um, I don't recommend that. And I'll get into why in just a minute, but uh, you can see I'm applying different coats here and I'll put up my fingers to kind of see, to indicate which coat this, this is. But the first coat goes on beautifully. You could see it just totally penetrating. You could feel it going into the wood. Um, it's not, you know, sliding around at all. It's working absolutely like I should. So on the left there, one, one coat and the other on the right there was two coats. Now the instructions do say three coats for hardwood and four coats for softwood. Poplar is a hardwood, so last time I checked it was anyway. I did uh, three coats, but I just for overkill because I'm obsessive like that, I put on four coats. Probably unnecessary, but I did it nonetheless. So here it is. I did sand down lightly between coats. I used a pretty you know low grit sandpaper, 220 I think, something in that area. You don't want to dig into the coat that you just put on, but you in my uh, testing, I, I um, basically figured out that sanding is better than not sanding, in my opinion, both for aesthetic and it also to knock down some of that, uh, some of those bumps. There, if you kind of move the brush along an unsanded part, it kind of snags a little, a little bit. So I preferred sanding it down really lightly, but you'll want to address that in your testing sample and then wipe it down. Of course, after you sand it down, you don't want to apply some fresh stain on top of, you know, dust or anything. So here are some more shots of application of the product. It goes on really well. Now you're going to want to, um, it looks like my, I got my fourth coat on my underside and I'm going to flip it over and talk about that. Uh, but I wanted to mention also make sure you wear a respirator while you, or, you know, make sure you have really good ventilation. If you're applying this, I'm doing it in my garage with it open and I also have a respirator and I'll put a link for the one that I used. I picked it up on Amazon, pretty affordable and you know, a little, little, uh, piece at night knowing that I didn't breathe all these dangerous fumes in. Um, now here's what I was talking about. If you flip it over, um, look at that. It, because I did the underside of this piece of wood first, it actually kind of dripped down and stained the top surface, which was a huge bummer. I was extremely, not just a bummer. I was pretty, pretty ticked off about that. Very expensive piece of wood, you know, 50 or 60 bucks or whatever. And I'm a huge cheapskate. So uh, I was left with either buying a new piece or trying to, um, to sand it out. And guess what I did? I bet you could take a guess, right? Uh, so I went ahead, moved on, and I put on the first coat on the top side of the poplar. And just look at that. It just brings it to life, doesn't it? I love this stuff. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. If you're looking for kind of a walnut color and something a little Java, darker, you're looking in the wrong place. This is um, the color that you're going to you're gonna get. And in the video, I'm, I am trying to give you a variety of light so you can kind of see what it might look like. And again, you're going to want to test that. Um, bring it up. If you're putting this in the bathroom, bring your test sample up into the bathroom. Use the same light to make sure it's, it is what you, what you want, right? The garage light might be very different from the light in your dining room or whatever. Um, but I just love how it brings all that texture of the wood, makes it pop. So in my experience, I really love this stuff. Now, how did I get these dark edges out? Look at that. So I put on the first coat and then I ended up lightly sanding with the same grit. Look at that. It's kind of an eyesore, right? So how did I do this? Well, I put stain all around it to try to kind of blend it in, but I basically just very lightly sanded it and kind of, I didn't let it dig or burn in any specific place, but kept it moving, right? And, and that pretty much did it by the th second or third coat uh, with sanding in between. It really evened, evened it out. And as you can see from the end shots uh, that you'll see uh, pretty soon, uh, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. So I was really pleased with that. Um, I'm very worried at first, but ended up being 
being okay in the end. So, but uh, you can learn a lesson from that and do your top side first. Uh, it's not that hard, right? You're just going to apply it like stain, keep, keep your brush moving. And I don't think you can mess it, mess it up. And then your drips on your edges will be on the underside, if that makes sense. So, uh, hopefully you can learn from my mistake there. Another shot of that going on. Those beautiful rings just br brought to life. There's no other way to say it. It just makes it pop. Uh, there are a little bit of, uh, you know, you don't want it to pool and dry pooled. So knock, you know, smooth things out with your brush, knock things down. You saw some air bubbles as I was applying it a little bit. Just kind of smooth that out. And it's uh, pretty easy. Again, I did four coats and I sanded in between each coat. Now, importantly, I mentioned this earlier, you have to wait 24 hours for each coat to cure and dry before you apply it. So plan that. Um, you could probably get away with less. I think maybe one coat I was like 20 hours or whatever it was. Um, but, you know, stick to the instructions. They, uh, these, the, the people that work for this company, they've presumably tested this, right, and printed that for a reason. So... Uh, if you're trying to hurry through this, you might botch the job. Um, your undercoat might not be fully dried and cured. And anyway, that's that's my that's my opinion. Now, um, after my third coat, I noticed my fourth coat again. This was a hardwood um, was kind of unnecessary. It started to kind of slosh around, and I could tell that it wasn't really penetrating. So it did seal, I think, pretty well after the third coat. I put a fourth coat on just for kicks and giggles. And again, I'm pouring it into my plastic container each time. I just use like a little juice container from my kids, rinsed it out really well and that served the purpose. So this was that last coat that I was referring to, but it dried really well, really evenly. And these are the final, some of the final shots for you. Again, I'm not a pro just to do it yourselfer. And uh, thanks for joining me in this video again if you are interested in learning how to you know measure uh step by step a wood countertop for your bathroom if you're looking for a cheap uh, but beautiful upgrade i mean why spend twelve hundred dollars on a on a granite countertop when you can spend 60 and it i think looks fabulous so search my channel for that video i've also got lots of other do-it-yourself uh videos and whatnot so subscribe if you are not a subscriber already and I'll just kind of finish up here I've got the strips on they're all sealed up as well again this was going into a bathroom right so I wanted everything from top to bottom sealed up so after I've got my four coats on I am water testing it once again to make sure everything went on okay so we'll just pour a glass of water on there and we'll let it sit for five minutes and look at that. There is zero penetration happening. It is beating really well, really nicely. I'm very, very pleased with this product. Five stars out of five stars, baby. That doesn't happen very often. Well, maybe 4.8, right? That 24-hour curing time was slightly inconvenient. But talk about a problem that's not really important, in my opinion. Can't we all just slow down a little bit? Why do we all have to be in such a big hurry, right? All right, we'll get that wiped up and we'll get that glued down and we'll leave you here with some final shots. If you're interested in sticking around for that, if not, thanks for being with me. Peace out. There we go. We've got it installed. Another shot for you, different lighting. Are you convinced? All right, and we'll stop the video right there. Thanks again for being with me.